Today we're checking out this amazing cinematic piano. It's subtle, it's detailed, it's got some beautiful overtones, and it's brought to us from Spitfire Audio. And the only catch to this whole thing is that it's actually free. Let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Steve from Feather Light Studio, and in this video we're talking about the brand new cinematic piano from Spitfire Audio. It's their Labs project. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Labs, Labs is a community project, and some of the most amazing cinematic treasures are found there, including this one. This is a beautiful Yamaha C7 piano that was sampled specifically for Labs, and Labs is put out by Spitfire Audio. So you have all of that technology and know-how and everything in an interface that's incredibly straightforward and simple to use. And this piano is a textured and detailed with a ton of rich overtones and a ton of subtlety. It's really the thing you want the most when you're working with cuts, especially cinema, where you're really looking for something that's subtle and has a lot of emotion to it. So there's all kinds of pianos out there. And, and if you're a piano player, you probably have quite a few in your library already, but this is really different than that. This isn't so much designed as a, as a live player tool where it's you know gritty and it's supposed to cut through the mix. This is really all about conveying an emotion. So let's dive in and find out a bit more about the Autograph Grand on the Labs platform by Spitfire Audio. Spitfire Audio was originally founded in 2007 by Christian Henson and Paul Thompson, and they work with some of the world's most prestigious film composers like Hans Zimmer, and they've made a lot of these orchestration tools available to all of us, like BBC Symphony Discover and Piano Book and this Labs project. The difference, though, is these are completely free. This is just a huge resource for film composers that maybe don't have a budget for giant high-end libraries, but still want to work with professional-level tools. I'll leave the relevant info in the links below about how to navigate to each one of these really amazing cinematic tools, but for the time being, we're dealing specifically with the Autograph Grand. Once you're on the Lab site, simply clicking on any of the sounds in the Lab's library and installing them automatically installs the Lab's free VST player. Once our Lab's project plugin has been installed, we can navigate to the Autograph Grand or any of the other sounds in the Lab's project and download them directly into our Lab's library. The Lab's interface is really into and straightforward. It shows you all of your installed libraries currently, and then it also allows you to browse through the ones that you haven't installed yet and makes them all available right there inside the plugin. And the setting page allows you to do a number of housekeeping things like change the directory or store them on different locations as far as external drives, that kind of thing. And you can check for updates to the plugin itself as well. In addition, you can also manage any of the other plugins that you might have from Spitfire Audio from their free directory. So Piano Book or the BBC Symphony Orchestra can also be managed here. So today we're working inside of Cubase and we want to create just a basic cinematic sketch for a video project that I'm working on just so we can hear the piano in context and we can hear kind of what it sounds like in a cinematic environment or application. So let's dive into Cubase real quick. We have a basic project set up here that includes the lab's interface. And as you can see, this is a really sparse interface. There's not a lot going on um, for the lab's interface. It just has a few basic parameters in addition to the regular controller parameters like your mod wheel and your pitch and the keyboard here. The interface is very straightforward. We'll give a quick run through of the top controls here. On the far left hand side, we see this little LED. If it's blinking, it simply indicates that the instrument is loading samples. So wait till that finishes before you actually start using the instrument. Right next to that is our CPU indicator. This gives you an idea of the overall stress on your system. The disk indicator gives you an indication of how much space is left on your sample storage locations. The memory gives you an idea of how much total memory is being used by the plugin at any one time. The voices indicator gives us a gauge of how many voices the plugin is producing at any one time. Next to this is our refresh controls. This allows us to refresh the samples or the plugin instance or refresh all the instances of labs simply by clicking on that. 
The next choice here on the right is our reverb selections. And these are all the ones that are included in this lab's library voice. And these are all really, really beautiful reverbs to choose from here. Our MIDI channels allow us to have the plugin respond to any MIDI channel or simply one. The instrument can be tuned up or down in a three octave range. It can also be panned here as well. And of course, our volume controls. And the options button simply gives us some indication of relevant info like the master tuning, streaming buffer size, preload size, and the voices. Down here on our main interface, we got a couple of different sliders and a large wheel here. The first of the sliders is the expression control. This controls the overall volume of the library that's loaded and it's connected to MIDI continuous controller value number 11. Next to that is our dynamics fader. This fades back and forth between the different dynamic velocity layers that are in the currently loaded voice. All the way to the top of the slider are the louder forte voices and on the bottom are the softer notes. So the most amount of dynamic range available here. And this fader is tied to MIDI CC number one, which is our mod wheel on our keyboard controller. On the right hand side to that, we have our large wheel. This gives us access to all the different parameters for this particular library voice. We have tightness and reverb. The tightness control sets the amount of pre-delay on the reverb all the way to the right gives us about a 40 millisecond pre-delay and all the way to the left is none so we can really tighten up the overall sound of the sample and the reverb gives us options to all the different reverbs that are available in this particular voice and there are quite a few there's some really beautiful reverbs in here from spring all the way up to a nice plate and down here on the bottom of the interface are our standard keyboard controllers we have our mod and pitch wheels in addition to the ability to set the octave ranges of the currently loaded library voice And this is just a really pretty plate reverb with a little bit of modulation going on in the background. And that's it. It's a pretty sparse overall interface. And it really is just the one patch here. We can load more into the labs interface if we choose to, but for the time being, we're just gonna be working with the Autograph Grand. So we have our interface here. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is import the video that we're gonna to work to today. So we're gonna come up to our timeline and we're gonna add a video track here. And Cubase can work with two different video tracks at a time. It's larger, more cinematic, big brother, Nuendo can handle more video related features, but Cubase itself, we're only gonna be working with just the one track here. So this is more than enough for us. We're gonna go ahead and add that track. One of the things about working to picture that's really important is to be able to set up markers in the actual project so that we can hit different scene transitions. And we need to be able to hit things like not just screen transitions, but also sound effects or moments in the video clip that are important to the overall storyline. So the first thing we wanna do is create a marker track. So we're gonna come up here to the project and we have a marker track already created. This is titled Video Hits. And we're gonna scrub through the timeline here and we're gonna drop markers on each one of the scene transitions. So as we scrub through the timeline here, our first transition happens right at about 514. So we'll drop a marker there. And then this one's simply gonna be titled, we'll call this Winding Road. And then we'll continue on. We'll grab this and drag the playhead. And our next transition is gonna be right at about 1613. So we'll drop a marker there and we'll title this one Walking Woman. And we'll continue this process until all the markers for our scene transitions are completed. This is obviously a really simplified version of this overall process, but it gives us a great example to use our autograph piano sound. All right, so we have all of our markers indicated here, and this really just gives us the opportunity to scrub through our timeline. We can always use Cubase's marker navigation system so that we can locate a specific marker, we can cycle through each one of them, we can zoom into them. But for the purposes of this particular demonstration, we're really just gonna use the markers to give us sort of a line of sight. So for the time being, we're gonna just go ahead and play through the entire thing and kind of get a feel for it and see what, what we can kind of work with here. So like right there, as we have that first transition, it'd be kind of nice to have a bit of a resolve there. We'll keep it kind of suspended there. Mm -hmm. 
After our basic sketch idea is finished and we have kind of an idea of where our overall composition is finally headed, then we want to go back and refine the melody over and over until we get each transition exactly the way we want. And this is one thing that Cubase's MIDI editor is just an absolute joy to work with in this regard. It's really powerful and gives us a lot of control over the velocity and all of the other parameters of the performance. So we want to go back and tighten up some of the note transitions and make sure that each one of the musical pieces takes full advantage of the Autograph Grand's dynamic layers. So now that we have a working idea, kind of a general concept of what we want our little cinematic sketch to be, we're going to add one more thing to it before we're ready to wrap it up here. And that's just to add an, another instance of labs, because we want to take advantage of some of that impressive and extensive library that's available. And there's a ton of stuff. So let's dive back in. We're going to add one more instance of labs. And this guy is going to be a kind of string sound. And there's a lot of different kinds of instruments in the labs library. There's a ton of different things to choose from, but this particular one we're going to actually use is from their scary strings collection. And it's a great collection of just all these really cool and unique and bizarre kinds of string sounds. And they all have just a huge range of emotion. Some of them are long legato samples, some are short, some are tension strings, a lot of different kinds of things to choose from. And the same kind of interface applies here. We only have just a few different things that we can choose from. We can change reverb, attack, and release of the strings, the velocity, and the overall volume. And this is gonna be more than enough for what we're actually gonna add here. We're really just gonna add a finishing touch on this to change the vibe of it just a little bit. So we'll start at about here. And that's it, that's all we're gonna add. And then we're gonna quickly put all this into a mix so that we can kind of hear what it sounds like in a cinematic context. And then we'll play the entire thing back and kind of see what we end up with. With all the changes to our composition complete, it's time to export our sketch out into the real world. So we'll come up here to the menu, we'll choose export and choose the video option. And then from here, this opens up the video options dialog box, the export options dialog box. Here we can give it a title, we can choose the destination of the file path. We can also choose to include or exclude the time code and which of the outputs it's actually going to get mixed down from. We can also choose to have it export in real time as well. On the right hand side, we'll give a readout of all the different video options that we're going to be exporting to. And then we finally save our file. This starts the export process. And from here, our sketch goes off for client approval. 
So that's a quick look at Spitfire Audio's Labs project, and specifically the brand new Autograph Grand Piano. It's just a gorgeous piano to work with, especially in a cinematic application like this. There's just a ton of detail and rich overtones and emotion to work with. And if you're not familiar with the Labs project, you really need to check out the entire project because the entire sound library is unbelievably awe-inspiring. There's a ton of creative potential there, a ton of cinematic potential there. I'll leave all that info in the links below so you can find out more about it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. If you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going. It helps me make more videos like this. Stay safe, be creative, add something creative to the world. It could really use it. We'll catch you guys in the next video.